It's time now for Mark Meets, in which I speak to the biggest names in the world of politics, showbiz, sport and beyond. Tonight, we meet the hugely talented Northern Irish singer-songwriter Janet Devlin, who competed in the eighth series of The X Factor in 2011. She was about 15 or 16 years of age. She finished in fifth place and took the world by storm. This exposure, however, was followed by the release of her debut album, Hide and Seek, which was a huge success. Loads of EPs and singles and a second studio album, Confessional, released on the 5th of June 2020. There have been live tours and Janet remains a hugely popular singer and songwriter. She's won awards as well for her music. She's been in a movie called Songbird and a powerful documentary feature about her own struggles with addiction. And there's the rub. She's had lots of success, but she's been through a tough time as well. In March 2020, she posted a video on YouTube explaining that she was a recovering alcoholic and had been sober since the age of 20, which is a great achievement. It's the ultimate story of survival. And I'm delighted to say that Janet Devlin joins us now. Hi, Janet. Hello. First of all, it's great to have you on the show. Oh, thank you. Can I congratulate you on your amazing recovery? Oh, thank you so much. And how did you do it? Oh, gosh. Um, it wasn't really through choice initially. Um, I ended up in recovery because of multiple horrible instances where I almost lost my life. Um, I joined the rooms, which is AA, um, and, I, and I got sober. So how old were you when you reached out for help? Do you remember how old you were? Oh, gosh. The first time I reached out for help, I think I was 19. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready for it. Uh, and it happens because as an alcoholic, you have to be willing to get better before you can actually start doing that. And I wasn't. Um, but when I was 20, I finally hit that rock bottom yeah. and I went and and, and finally started to get better. Uh, and, and what did that look like, that rock bottom? Oh, golly. Um, Messy. It, it was all, yeah, but it, my rock bottom wasn't my worst case scenario because I'd had a, a situations where, like, I was on my way to a red carpet and I passed out in King's Cross Station bathrooms because I was absolutely drunk. You can imagine, red carpet guy and passed out in a bathroom. Um, but that wasn't where I got sober. Uh, my rock bottom was my emotional rock bottom mm. where I just couldn't actually take any more and I was on my hands and knees and I was ready to finally stop drinking. Well, it's just a, a wonderful triumph that you're here now. The picture of health, you look incredible. <laughs> and I know your music is your big obsession and your mm -hmm. great addiction. Um, clearly, you've, you've been through so much. Uh, why did it happen in the first place, do you think? Oh, gosh, because um, I think a lot of people hear my story and they're like, oh, that's what happens when you go on TV young. And um, I have to really... Yeah, a bit of I told you so yes. about, about showbiz. And unfortunately, it wasn't, that wasn't my story. You should story. have been an accountant. Yeah, I know. It, unfortunately, I suffered with depression at mm. the age of 11. I was self-harming by 12. I was anorexic by 15. I was showing clear signs of addictive behaviours. And it wasn't until last year that I got diagnosed with borderline personality disorder mm. and bipolar type 2. And there are very clear symptoms of, of, of those conditions. So Yeah, and, and it, it, it's, it's a chemical. I mean, it's, it's a physical disease as well as a, a psychological one, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, the chemical yeah. balance in the brain? Uh, so no one truly knows why someone becomes an alcoholic. Uh, there is no... And that's, and that's how you're an alcoholic. This wire in your brain is wrong. Unfortunately, there isn't that. There's a lot of circumstances. And some people believe you can drink yourself yeah. into it. And some people believe that you are traumatized. And that's what happens. There is no actual understanding as to why people become addicts. And now you've got your life back. Thankfully, yes. <laughs> After a lot of searching, I, I finally got it back. Can I say, though, you got in very early with recovery <laughs> at the age of 19 or 20. That's great because you've got the rest of your life ahead of you in sobriety. There's there's a lot to do, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. Um, oh, it, it was a blessing and a curse, you know, because I did do the TV and stuff, which meant I did have money, which meant I had too much money to drink. Um, but it meant that I hit my recovery young and it's given me my 20s yeah. which if i was continuing to drink i wouldn't have i would have no recollection of whatsoever well, feel free not to answer any of these questions but was it mainly booze or were there other substances uh there were so the first time was just mainly booze but i also and this is an untalked about issue especially in the uk uh, i was addicted to benzodiazepines which are used for uh, sleep mm. um so i was addicted to sleeping pills uh, for about seven years. 
Um, and I was casually overdosing on those a lot and casually drinking them. And using them as effectively a tranquilizer. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would have thought that that might have been the hardest thing to get off, was it? I say this to people a lot because I went to, I did three years, three and a half years sober, then I relapsed. And now I'm almost four years sober again. Like, so I'm lucky, but I went to rehab in in the middle of that. Um, And I don't think I would have went to rehab if they'd said to me, oh, you can't have your benzos if you go here. That's how hooked I was on them. So you could you could get over the idea of never having a drink again, yes. but I'll be needing those sleeping pills. Absolutely. And it's it, when you sit back and you look at that, you're like, that's crazy thinking. But I wasn't exactly seeing. Well, so. we've seen it with with celebrities um, getting addicted to opioid opioid painkillers. Yes. Um, some very high profile, very successful, <laughs> accomplished people. Uh, Ant McPartlin, brilliantly talented, one half of Ant and Deck. Yeah. Got a really bad knee injury really struggled with the uh, addiction to painkillers. It's so, a real issue. Yeah. yeah, and it's not talked about because it's it's a, it's a it's a demon dressed in a different way because yeah. it's legal. Yeah. And you can get a prescription for it, but nobody really wants to face that issue of oh wait, they can be just as bad. So that's done. Let's talk about your incredible music. Okay. First of all, did you have an early interest in music? Were you given an instrument? What happened? Uh, yes, so I was in a Keeley band at the age of 4. Uh, playing the tomuso, which then led to playing the fiddle. Um, so I was always into music. Singing was never the thing, though. The only reason I got into singing was because I was a drummer and I needed money to buy my drum kit. And I did singing competitions to earn money. And bada bing, bada boom, I don't know why I ended yeah, up the doing rest, music. Yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. So can you, still, can you still play an instrument? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, Not you, well, but okay. Because actually, the, the, that le- the level of Kaylee music is, is pretty damn high, isn't it? It's fast and it's precise. Absolutely. And it's all done by ear. Yeah. You know, you, you aren't right. You're not reading sheet music. You're, no. You just know the songs and yeah. you're playing them. And you've got to keep the pace. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's fun, though. I love traditional music and I'll never let that go. And it was an important thing for me to try and incorporate in the last record with Confessional. Yeah. There's a lot of Irish music in there, so... Yeah. Well, that's it. So can we look forward to another album? I'm working on it at the minute. Amazing. Yes. Um, hopefully a wee bit more of like a, still like popish, but with like a country undertone in there. So Love that. Who are the people that have influenced you over the years? Who are your heroines or heroes? Uh, it changes a lot mm. um, because a lot of my heroes have uh, <laughs> come out and uh, we find out that they've done a lot of despicable acts. Uh, so they lost their rankings. So um, we lost Michael Jackson. <laughs> Oh, and a few others. A lot. I, I lost Bill Cosby a few years ago. Oh, I'll spare cute. you the details. Yes. Yeah, so for me, it was the Chili Peppers. Oh yeah. Lost those as heroes, yeah, exactly. but I've got better heroes now, like the likes of Chris Stapleton and things like that. Brilliant, you know, brilliant, brilliant. And and um, what about that experience on, on X Factor? I mean, I'm I'm sure you'll tell me you wouldn't change the thing because it's been a bumpy ride. But here you are to tell the story. Mm. Uh, what about that experience? Did you, if I told you on your first day, your first audition, that you would you would have gone that far? Would you have believed me? Absolutely not. No way. Finish like, fifth is incredible. To put, yeah, but to put it in perspective, like I was flying to judges' houses to Miami and I was doing my psychology homework on the plane. I was Imagine. doing my score because I was like, oh, the, this bubble's going to burst. Like, and, and tell me about the emotions when, when you got that far. I mean, were you afraid? Were you excited? Were you happy? It's all very surreal because I was 16, so I didn't really have much of a concept of, of what was going on. But I, I, was, I was in a really bad place in the sense of I had a lot of depression and things like that going mm. on. And I was, in, I was in an awful relationship um, at the time as well. I, I didn't have a lot of self-belief. Um, but that's what the show gave me. It was this, you can do it. Like people like your voice. And, and I think that was the little kick I needed because I don't know otherwise if I would have had the confidence to go into music. I almost needed a, a platform of national television to be like, <laughs> You know, you can actually sing. <laughs> it's a great place to find out, isn't it? Well, that's, front of Simon why I, that's why I went on. I was like, if anyone's going to tell me whether I can sing or not, I mean, Simon will let me know. He will. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't mince his words, exactly. does he? Uh, you're an amazing talent. Ridiculously beautiful young woman. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Congratulations on your recovery. Uh, that's probably your greatest triumph. Thank you. Uh, but much. clearly what lies ahead is a, a lot of musical success. I know you do so many live gigs and, and also you're a huge star online with online shows. 